Um, hello, this is Joe Maycook with the PHS Cultivating Community Garden Histories Project in collaboration with the Norris Square Neighborhood Project. Today's date is October 14th, 2021, and I'm here on location in, this is Las Parcelas? Yes. Okay, um, garden with award-winning community gardener, doll maker, and organizer, Iris Brown. Let me know if you'd like to add anything else to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all true as far as I could tell. Um, so, and today's conversation will focus on the history of your gardening work in Norris Square. Um, and I was thinking we could maybe even do a little tour of any selected parts of this garden. I had thought that we might be doing this in El Colobo, but I'm happy to, you know, do a little tour of Las Parcelas too, because I haven't really seen it. Oh, we, we could move to Colobo. Oh, okay. Is, we could go there. Yeah. Um, well, whatever, whatever you would like to highlight, I know that um, both of these gardens have received, were in the documentary, um, which, uh, let me see, um, the with Scribe Video Center. Yes. Uh, yes. So, um, I know that they're both not entirely wanted for attention, but I thought it would be nice to get your thoughts on them now, 15 years later. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but I wanted to start, um, if that's okay, with uh, just quickly, um, if you want to talk a little bit about your background, um, you know, in gardening and where, and you know, um, and all that. So I wanted to start by asking, where did you grow up? Um, and did you or your neighbors have gardens there? Well, I grew up in Puerto Rico, which is a garden. A garden. The whole, the whole island is a garden, um, and uh, that's that's what we call it, the enchanted island. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there, and we don't we don't call them gardens. Mm -hmm. We just plant. <laughs> we plant some trees around so 365 days a year. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, in uh, Loiza? In Loiza. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Cool. Um, and so, but so, uh, I, I then wanted to, I guess, I guess that segues into the next question. Um, so what are your first memories of planting and gardening, et cetera? Um, My first memory of planting is back home in Puerto Rico with my grandmother and mm -hmm. with um, people from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I saw the bananas growing and all the fruit trees. And it was an area where we, uh, they planted uh, flowers, mm -hmm. flowering plants. And th that's my memory, just going, going to the backyard because at that time we didn't have refrigerators Mm -hmm. And since it is very hot, we don't know how to can, no canning. Yeah. And it was just, they would send me to the garden, to, or to the back. It was not named a garden. But they would send me there and say, will you please go and get me a ají, a ají, or you go and get me some oregano, or mm -hmm. whatever it is that my grandmother needed. Uh, they would send me, since I was the oldest of all of the grandchildren, to go and get these fruits or vegetables. Oh. How many other grandchildren were there? Um, well, I am the oldest of ten. Wow. And so on and so on. We were many. But at that time, uh, they, were all, they were not born, all of them. So I'm going to say that living there with my grandmother, we were about six or seven. And when was that time, roughly, when you were about six or seven? Well, I was born 1947. Oh, okay. So, ni like, 1953, 1954. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's... Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, so you would say, I, I guess, is there anybody else you've talked about, mem you know, members of your community, your grandmother, any other people who taught you how to garden that you want to highlight or were your garden men gardening mentors, so to speak? Yeah, um, back home, <laughs> the whole community. It was <laughs> a time when we learned from each other, <laughs> and that was part of the beauty. Uh, we learned to cook, we learned to sew, we, le we learned to do carpentry. That's, you know, it was just 
uh, you will be with adults and they will mm -hmm. be teaching you their trade. So it was not organized, it was just mm -hmm. that I would be near that person that was doing something of my interest and so on. Mm -hmm. So they were my first. Coming here later on, I learned a lot from Peter Grove, mm -hmm. and he was the director of Norwich Grand Neighborhood Project. I didn't speak any English, he didn't speak any Spanish, but I learned how to make tea. Oh. He's from in England, and I learned how to make tea, and it was just like, I don't know how he drinks this, because he had milk, tea with milk. I like tea with lemon. <laughs> so it just, you know, but I will bring him tea. I don't know if it was too many times a day. I just wanted to, to be near him because he was, he still is passionate about gardening. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, the, the cup of tea gave me the opportunity to see what he was doing. I couldn't ask him. And even if I asked, he couldn't tell me because of the languages. Mm -hmm. So I will be there, just there, bringing more tea so I could just look at what he was doing. That's really, <laughs> that's really nice and really smart too. Um, you, seems like you got a lot out of it. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I will be, and I'll be interviewing him too. Next oh, week. super, yes. He's, yes. you're gonna like him. Yes, um, but so I guess that kind of leads I, I want to backtrack a little bit because you mentioned that he was the director of Norris Square Neighborhood Project. Yes. So, but how did you come to, you know, NSMP in the first place? Um, well, I, I came to Norris Square because I have four children of my mm -hmm. own. And uh, the second one, her name is Nitsa, and she was in third grade, and her teacher was Natalie Kepner. And Natalie Kepner, later on, she founded Norris Square Neighborhood Project. Okay. So she had um, a very small group of children from the community and they had summer program and they also had after school programs. And my children, they were participating in these uh, classes, mm -hmm. but I didn't let my children be with people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So if my children were here, you know that I was there. So that's how I was introduced to this incredible woman, Natalie. Mm -hmm. And we became friends and she taught one year in Puerto Rico. Oh. And that made it easier because she was able to speak a little bit of Spanish and I was learning a little bit of English and we were able to speak to each other and we became friends. Okay, so then so then you went on to work for NSMP, is that correct? I was doing volunteer work mm -hmm. and that gave me the opportunity to be with my children, my children in Norris mm -hmm. Square and also to go on trips and also I, w I went camping with them and I will go canoeing, wherever they went, I went as a chaperone. That was the excuse. <laughs> nice. I just needed to be with my children. And then later on, Natalie promised me that when she started getting funds, she would hire me. And she did. So there you go. Yeah. And so then you were hired. So the first director was Peter Grove, and you were the first. Oh, no. The first. No, it was not the director. It was Natalie. Oh, I see. Uh, the co and the co-founder, her name was Helen Love. Yes. And then it was Indigo uh, that she used to work with them. And they, they were th these three women doing programs in this organization that they didn't have a name at that time. It was just a building and they were looking for funds so they will fix the building. Mm -hmm. So the pro the programs were held in the porch. It was outside uh, in <laughs> All the porch. Outside. Yeah, in kinda, the porch. Kind of like COVID with these programs, <laughs> yeah, today. But so this was so this was nineteen eighty three or I believe so. Okay. They like some I 
online I saw 1973, and I, now I'm realizing that must be a complete typo. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, wow. And so, so then you are working for Norris Square um, through the. Uh, and so then Peter Grove was like the second director. In, like, the uh... Yeah, and like Natalie and, and Helen, and they were doing that. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. Okay. Yes, Peter was like the first official. First official uh, director. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so then I I know that, but Norris Square wasn't the only, um, you know, group you were affiliated with in the later half of the 80s. I know you also came to co-found Grupo Motivos. Is that right? Um, could you elaborate a little bit about that process and about, you know, meeting Tomasita Romero and, you know, the others? You know, well, I think what we need to, 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 to learn or talk about is that this neighborhood was totally uh, devastated by the drugs. And at that time, the director that we had her name was uh, Sister Carol Keck. Mm -hmm. She formed a group uh, of residents that they will go and uh, disturb mm -hmm. the activity of drug selling in X, commun in X corner. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know any of the women. Mm. Sorry. It's okay. You Have you read this book? I, I don't think I have. It's by Jane Yolen. Um, must. Okay. I I have it in English, and it was a present from a mm -hmm. a person that came to Norway Square in the, oh. what what year was that? Nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one, and oh. when he left, uh, he had he gave me an assignment mm -hmm. it's somewhere um, oh I'm reading on the wrong page Keep the this is this is the assignment that he gave me. Keep the Tainos in Norris Square alive. Is that? Yeah. Wow. That was the assignment that he gave me, and he doesn't know, and I don't know how to get in touch with him, but I would love to get in touch with Peter. Peter Wanders is that yeah. you say his name? Peter Wanders. So, what was his relationship to? To Norris Square. Yes. Um. Natalie, she was a woman that she visited and she had connections with so many people around the planet. And she believed in having volunteers and then they will come for about six months. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they, they used to be in a church. It was something, some, some kind of program that they would stay in the neighborhood so they will learn from the neighborhood people. And Peter wonders, I think she, he was studying one of the universities here, and he went to Norris Square to help with the after school. But you know, there you get these volunteers that they get attached, mm -hmm. and we get attached to them, and he was one of them. So then when he left, uh, he finished school and he left, Ah, so he sent me the book. Oh, so that book, for for the reference of anyone listening, is Encounter by Jane Yolen, um, illustrated by David Shannon. So, yeah, I I think I might have read it honestly, because um, I do remember reading about the Taino um, when I was younger, and I think that with pictures, and I think that might be the book, but I'm not sure. Um, it was I must have been like seven years old or younger than that, probably. Well, the book is from. Uh... 1991, I guess. 1991. <laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, 
And this, the last page of the book, I use the book constantly and I bought it in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So what I do with the book is that I, I ask somebody that speak English fluently to read one page and then I read the one in Spanish. But this one, um, Second paragraph here, he says that is why I, I am, I, an old man now, dream no more dreams. That is why I sit here wrapped in a stranger's cloak, counting the stranger's bells on a string telling my story, make it be a warning to all the children and all the people in every land. Wow. Yeah, it's I, just, I, yeah I remember this book. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. It is powerful, and I have been using the book mm -hmm. since, since that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it never fails mm -hmm. because um, the story, how this child saw and when the Europeans came to our lands, how he was able to see what the elders didn't. And because he was a child, nobody listened to him. And he changed the world, right? Yeah. So now he's an old man and he doesn't dream anymore. You know how sad that is? That you cannot dream, you, you yeah. see something and you cannot dream of changing that. Yeah. That is sad. So the book is, is, is I, 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 it would be incredible uh, for me to get in touch with Peter mm -hmm. and say to him, this is with, uh, this is what we have been doing mm -hmm. in, uh, in this neighborhood. It's really important work to talk about colonialism like that. Yeah. Um, well, I do, yeah, that, that was a very good, you know, like, interlude to talk, to talk through that book, and I'm glad that you're doing that work. Um, but I wanted to, though, I think you were in the middle of talking a bit about the project under Carol Keck of cleaning up the drug problem yeah. and standing, uh, and disturbing the operations and standing at corners. I think I read in one interview, it talked about, you know, you holding vigils and whatnot. Yeah. Yes. They, they used to do that, and uh, it was incredible because it was the first time that something like that was done in the neighborhood. Uh, most of the times, um, communities like this, people don't say anything. Oh, well, this is the way it goes. Um, they have the power. And, but with her, she was able to get the local police officers involved Mm -hmm. She was able to change so many things in the community because like if they say that I knew that they were selling drugs next to my house and I will call the police, well, I believe that that was supposed to be some kind of protection for me, that the police will do their work without getting me involved because mm -hmm. I, am not, I was not a police officer. You know what they used to do? They will come and they will knock on the door of the person that made the call. Yes. Before they went to talk to the drug, to the person that was selling the drugs. So everybody stayed quiet. Mm -hmm. Because what, what was gonna happen to us after the police left? You know, mm -hmm. you will be in trouble with a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. So everybody was like, I have to mind my business. But Sita Caro, she kept at it, she kept at it, and later on, she was able to involve not only the local police, but the federal ones, the FBI. We are talking about the FBI. Mm. So they, they, um, they came, and it was just incredible. I remember us, um, we used to do a tour mm -hmm. of the gardens and prepare lunch for a group of uh, people that they were starting to be um, 
district attorneys. Mm -hmm. District attorneys and the people in the neighborhood, they knew uh, the, the type of cars that the um, detective were using. And they used to, you know, it was just a phone call or just, they have ways to tell the other people that they were detective in the neighborhood. So everybody would be, you know, quiet because they didn't want to go be arrested. So when we had the lunches here, imagine this scenery, we had helicopters watching this group of people here. This was bad. This was bad, that they have to be watching them, protecting them. So they will come, see the garden, and then have lunch, and then get in their cars and go home safely. So in addition to all the, the smells and tastes of the garden and the sounds of cars in Philadelphia, you also have the sound of the helicopters. Sound of helicopters. Oh. So our life, uh, that's why I'm, I'm still, the garden, these gardens for me, they mean so much because I could tell the way it was before the gardens and the way it has been with the gardens. Mm -hmm. And it's just, but it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. And, and then um, when I was, I don't think I was asked, no, I think it was me saying, i do it, without knowing what I was getting into. Um, I just saw the opportunity to be outside instead of being in Norris Square, working there. So I said, i do it, but I didn't know. And I didn't have a clue, I don't have a tr I What I learned, I started learning from Peter, and then by experience and by try and error, that's my background as a gardener. And when I, when I started doing that, it, it was just, okay, if we plant something, who is going to eat it? If we plant vegetables, who is going to eat it? When the people are suffering the way they are. It's not, okay, let's get together, we put some music and we could cook something and we celebrate. No, that was not the spirit. The spirit, when they took the 60 people all together, was a spirit of desperation. So. Something told me they could care less about gardening. It's like a flower, and here I am. I'm going to be inspired, I'm going to be celebrating that flower when it's not in me to, to do that. So that was the spirit of the whole community. So I said, okay. Something that is in there in them is their culture. Mm -hmm. That is there. Doesn't matter if you are from France and you end up living in Hawaii or wherever. That's your culture. Francia. And you are taking that with you. Doesn't matter where you end up going. So I said, no, I'm going to start with music because I had a radio, I had a portable radio mm -hmm. and I'm going to start with music. So I will come put music. Mm -hmm. I started writing quotes, the blackboard. I started doing things that honestly don't have anything to do with gardening. People think that they don't. But in our situation, they had everything to do with garden. I would call my friend Tomasita. Tomasita, what about if mm -hmm. we make some ñañicletas, you know, it's a fried dough mm -hmm. and beans. I said, I have flour. She said, I have beans. Okay, so why do we need to have an area for cooking in the gardens? We don't, right? You could have a garden without having that area. For us, it was a necessity because there we will cook and the smells, then we will invite people to come. We had mm -hmm. conversations about everything and also they had, we 
had a space where we could start thinking about dreaming something else. Because the, the whole conversations in the neighborhood was about they arrested this person, this person is in jail, this person died of an overdose, they are going to bury somebody, and it was just that. <laughs> you know, and you cannot force, uh, you cannot force a person to change their mentality. <laughs> That's, it takes a, a long time. And if we say, oh, what about when you, do you remember when you eat to, ra to eat rice and beans in Puerto Rico with your grandma? Yeah, but it's not the same. If you are passing by and you smell the food, and then you remember the rice and beans with your grandma. And it's even better if you are invited to eat some of that rice and beans and you have some music and things like that, then, then, is when you're gonna start thinking something could be changed if we get together. Mm -hmm. And that was another beauty of the gardens. You know, it's just, I ask the same question to different people all, all of the time. Tell me one thing that you cannot do in a garden. And I'm asking you now. <laughs> um. No, uh, uh, I mean, I guess you're not. Wow. Okay. Um, so I think we where we left off. You were asking me one thing you cannot do in a garden. Mm -hmm. I guess my answer would be that you can't, um, you know, remove any of the plants or whatever that you that you plant without. I guess with the stipulation that you can remove them, you know, if you're going to plant something different, um, but that you can't remove what makes it a garden, which is, to me, um, to me, what makes a place a garden specifically is that you have plant, is that people have planted something there, or have maintained something there that other people have planted or nurtured there. Um, so, like when you say Puerto Rico is a garden. I see. I I believe that, or at least I I take it that you mean that like the whole place is uh, is a set of plants that people have cared for, even if they haven't themselves necessarily planted anything directly for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. In my interpretation, does that does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's just that you could do practically everything in the garden. You like poetry, you like to yeah. read it, you like to write it, you need music, you need, you want to, what is it? You could get married here? I mean, so, so, um, by that, having the space, and honestly, we didn't have the money to develop this into a garden. We didn't have the money until later on, that came, that PHS came. Mm -hmm. I do, I do want to get to PHS coming, but I wanted to, I wanted to back, backtrack again and focus on the timeline. So the time when you started playing the music, um, mm -hmm. you know, putting up quotes, etc., cetera, um, was that around 1992 or before, before 1992, right? No, it okay. was not before. It oh. was, no, 1990, 19, you said 1992? Yes, I did. Um, it depends, because we did gardens much earlier. Mm -hmm. Remember when I used to bring tea? Yes. We did gardens and that, that now they, they don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. They were the beginnings and they belong to, to... It was they allowed us to plant with the children. Mm -hmm. We had one on Diamond and Hancock, that is not there any longer. We had another one on Diamond and Howard, that is not there any longer. Mm -hmm. We had one on uh, Dolphin and Waterloo, it's not there. We had one on Dolphin and Masher, that is, that is Iris Rodriguez Garden now. Norris Square lets her have a garden there. 
That's right. The lands belong to Norwich Square, but she has a garden, a community garden there, mm. and so on and so on. But um, for this garden, um, we will have to look at the a stone that we have there. Oh, well, let's go look at the stone. Okay. I think that, I could leave it there. I think that will give us, it will give me a, an idea. <laughs> was a program, the Green Country Town program. It was three years that they will, the PHS PS, will come to the community and help the neighbors develop mm -hmm. the gardens. So, so that means that by 1990, by 1990, we, we, uh, we had the garden, I'm going to say a couple of years earlier than that, than 1990, because we were cleaning and we were starting with um, listening to music, but we didn't have the resources to, to, to have the benches and to have the tables and to plant trees. So it was just an empty space that we were begging the, the city, the government, to help us with the fences so wow. people will not... So people will not sell drugs, yeah. That is, again wow. and again. So we yeah. were mostly cleaning, listening to music, <laughs> and at that time it was... We know that we want to do a garden, but <laughs> how do we do it when we... We didn't have any experts in the community we didn't have any resources. People, they were not helping even mm -hmm. to maintain it because they were not dreaming about a garden. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anywhere you want to point out uh, any any other places? I could I see a lot of quotes that I uh, that are very that are interesting. Um, but any other places in the garden you want to talk about? Um, any other places? Yeah. Yeah. The mural. Mm. This is two thousand. This was two thousand. They restore. It was oh, a restoration. They it. Ah, I see. So the the mural was done when we were celebrating here, the Green Country Town. Uh, they couldn't finish it up on time. Mm -hmm. So it was at that time. 1993, yeah. when they were still, you could see the, the scaffolds uh, because they couldn't finish it on time. But they, they also are women uh, from Grupo Motivos, and they are like, uh, his name is Angelo, and Angelo, he came from a very um, um, broken family, I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and his uh, brother Tony and Maritza, the sister, mm -hmm. they used to go to Norris Square and they would be there as soon as they could get there and they would leave very late because Norris Square for them was an area uh, where they could be peaceful. Mm -hmm. And then Angelo, he would be working with us in the garden, learning and working. Mm -hmm. And that's Elliot and his brother, Lucia Cruz, and uh, Ernestina, she, she died. Doña Carmen, the one in the black, Yes. she just gave us a 
a workshop, a cooking workshop last Saturday. Is that Carmen Rojas? See, si. see si, from the uh, the documentary. Yes, yeah. yes. Wow. Oh. So it's eighty-seven, and it was amazing. It was just amazing to mm -hmm. see her, to be with her, to learn from her. It was wow. just incredible. That is Paulina Borges. She's <laughs> also in the documentary. Yes. Uh, Jeannie, she she died. Mm -hmm. And Lucia, we call her the Taino, the Taina, but she's she she can hardly walk. And mm -hmm. we have been offering them tr a transportation back and forth, so they could be with us, so we could create some workshops right now for them. Uh, the one in the yellow, six tapas, she died. I don't believe she's part of the documentary. I believe she died before that. Mm -hmm. And it is Matos. She moved from the neighborhood. And then here they are. And uh, we have three family members there. Mm -hmm. So we have three different generations uh, in that particular mural from the same family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. OK. Uh, for the benefit of any listeners in the future, I'm going to say that the mural is on location yeah, here in Los Barcelos. But um, and I think there's also I'm pretty I believe there's also a photograph of this in the Smithsonian Community of Gardens website um, that has archived this. But yeah, just uh, the figures that um, you just described are all kind of uh, showing various gardening. Well, all kind of depicted, you know, in working in the garden, I see. Yeah, because they, yeah. they love to work in the garden. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing was that the director at that time, Sister Carol Cake, she gave me instructions. Very, I mean, they were clear instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, she asked me to work with Jane Golden, the director of Mural Art. Mm -hmm. She asked me to work with her and show her the wall. And she gave me instructions what she wanted to see on that wall. And there were these people, heroes that I don't even remember who they were. And I said, Jane Golden, these are the instructions that Sister Caro gave me. I am no one to give you instructions. I'm just gonna tell you what it means, what, what, what has sense, what makes sense what kind of heroes we should have in this community that is suffering so much. I could care less if they put, if it could be the most beautiful and beautiful mural about this person that she, he or she did some things, like incredible things, but I don't know them. I say, Jane Golden, you know, a lot of people, they know Lucia Cruz. And when they see her in the community, they're going to say, oh, you are the one that is in the mural. And Lucia could tell her about things that we do in the garden, about, mm -hmm. and it will be these conversations. And she said, they're going to be local heroes. So that's the name. So that's how you got it. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. It sounds like it was very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, uh, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Another area is this here. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's like um, they have no uses in, in 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. But this is the way that we used to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just. We put fuel under here. Yeah, yeah, and then we cook on top. Wow. So we used to cook, and then we had later on we had an electric stove there, mm -hmm. and we had the refrigerator here. So mm -hmm. we were set. And all these things, I asked this man. His name is he died, Kim Shio, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, we had dishes and we had cups and we had. We have everything that we needed mm -hmm. to uh, for us and also for the visitors. So this is the kitchen where you made the 
um, the beans and rice and the yes. fr and the fried dough that yes. entice so many people. Yes, wow. this is the one. <laughs> and it's still here after th almost 30 years. Yes. Like, yeah. Wow. So this is the one. Mm -hmm. And this is the place where we used to write a quote. It didn't have this. Oh. They added this lately, mm. but it was just this. And uh, then we needed a space to wash. So we take the hose and we wash here. All that was decorated with old parts mm -hmm. and things from Puerto Rico. So it was just trying to, every corner that we went to, it was some kind of inspiration, some kind of remembering mm -hmm. where you came from. Uh, and different things um, that you don't see normally because the time that I'm talking about is it was different. We didn't have let's say music, Puerto Rican mu is, uh, Spanish music, nowhere to be found. We didn't have TV stations in Espanol, no radio station. We couldn't go to the library and find a book in Spanish. Wow! So it was it was a different time. So it was fulfilling a lot of community functions, and yeah. it still does. Um, wow. And the casita mm -hmm. uh, is totally, it's a mess in, in there now, because <laughs> we had the celebration, and uh, the one, the man that said, Mom, that's my son, Nemo. <laughs> And he will be a good person to interview to talk to, okay. because he's really he's passionate about the gardens. Mm -hmm. So in there, it's decorated. It's in, he has a bed, a tiny bed, and he has scenes that are brought from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it has been very important for the gardeners and for the people in general. Mm -hmm. Because how many little houses like this you see here? Not that many. I believe this is the only one, wow. and it's a house from the mountains. You don't, you hardly see these houses in Puerto Rico anymore because now they are made out of cement. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is from the old times with no electricity, mm -hmm. no running water, mm -hmm. and this is the place where we we used to gather. Um, it was a lot of gathering because the lack of. TV mm -hmm. and radio. It was storytelling, how they call it now. Mm -hmm. But it was normal for us having conversations or music or somebody will start dancing and then the other will follow. You start singing a song and the other people will join you. It was just a lot of things, a lot of memories for from that time, me growing there, that I wanted to bring here with the hope that it will help us uh, you know, get it together. Like it's gonna, it could be better. We need to to heal from all of that pain, mm -hmm. and then hopefully uh, the neighborhood will get better. And honestly, I'm telling you that our children in the community now they are grown ups. They are doing better. My children, that generation that grew up in Norris Square, they, they grew up in it, they are better. They have good jobs, they are not using drugs, they are just, you know, good citizens. Mm -hmm. I am not saying that the gardens had everything to do with that, but I'm saying that the gardens have been part of so many lives. Mm -hmm. And I want to think that some of those lives has been touched by Norris Square Gardens. Right. I, I have to believe that. Mm -hmm. And by the, I mean, you mentioned, a second. Um, you mentioned that there were a lot of activities that you did in the yeah. area that you don't, that you wouldn't normally think of as, you know, necessarily belonging to a garden, like, you know, playing music, uh, yeah. bake cooking and all that. So all the culture that you've, yeah. you know, brought in and that came first has also been a huge part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be, I used to be, uh, believe it or not, me with my uh, nonsense English. Did you believe that I, <laughs> I was uh, the president of the Green, uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Green Board? Philadelphia Green Board? 
Oh, well, do, do tell about, elaborate. <laughs> Mira, that was incredible, Anna. <laughs> I think they were, uh, I think they were, if they, how do you say that? Uh, they regret it. <laughs> they regretted pointing you? Yeah, I believe so. Because it was just like, I didn't go there with nonsense. I didn't go there. I was very busy in the community, uh, taking care of my children, my mother, and doing all the things that we did. I didn't go there just for the fun of it. I went there with a mission. What is there for my community, right? <laughs> but we, I mean, it was, it was fun. We did, we did, um, I remember that I started the meetings like in español. <laughs> Buenas tardes, ¿cómo están todos? Ay, pero. Eh? <laughs> but then it, it was incredible. It was just incredible. It was. It was. <laughs> it's almost the end. You said <laughs> that ever. It was uh, just. Oh, bueno. Buenas tardes. Oh no, but we just have dinner. We should. Dinner. <laughs> Buenas tardes, que se oiga. <laughs> but I mean, we did many things together. And um, mm -hmm. I used to take groups to Puerto Rico, and many of the board members they went with me mm -hmm. to Puerto Rico, and so on. Well, we did so many things. It was a lot of activities yeah. going what? on. So, so when did you become? I know that you were on the that you went in went to meetings a few times because I believe there's a there was a like an article where you mentioned how you spoke English for the first time in public at one of them. <laughs> um, but um, so I didn't, didn't want me to. I don't. Well, but I don't. I think that that story's already been told though. So I was going to ask um, when did you become president? Um, do you remember? I could also probably find it in the yeah. You could, I guess, you could yeah. find it in my memory. You know, it's like too many things. Um, but uh, yeah, I was there for a while, and then I, mm -hmm. they invited me to be part of the. Uh, it's another board there. PHS board, or it's, no. it's, it has council. I think it's PHS, council. Yes, the council. Yes. Okay. But that was too distract. It was very good people. Very all oh, good people, but it was distracting to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it was distracting to me. Because you had so much to do here. As well. I had too much to do here, and they would talk mostly about this incredible project that they didn't have anything to do with my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They would talk about Spring Garden, mm -hmm. uh, the prison area, you know, how to beautify those areas, and that is fine. It's still in Philadelphia. But remember, my mission was Norway Square. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we did. Well, we did. We did so many things. And uh, we, oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to hear your stories about that too. But I. But I wanted to also say I know. I'm sorry. I'm just go. Off. I'm learning. I'm learning so much. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. I just go. Off. Yeah. No. I, it's good. And we've. I, I'm. I'm really. I'm learning a lot. And you've answered a lot of questions that I wanted to ask to some extent. So. But so Las Parcelas, so this here, the, um, the 1990 to 1993 kind of process of building it, this is the first garden you built with um, NSNP and with Grupo Motivos, right? But there were others, um, Raices, um, Jardín de Paz, uh, El, 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 Bate. El Bate. Yes, okay, that was, that's not a word that I've ever really seen before I, you know, you know. It's but, a Taino word. Mm. It's Taino, yeah. Okay, that make, that makes a little sense. But so, what was so? How was the process of kind of developing those as you were? Well, yeah, during this time period where you were working with Philadelphia Green and PHS and whatnot. Well, that that gave me the opportunity to focus, for example, in raíces, that means roots. Mm -hmm. So that was focusing on, on the roots of the Puerto Rican people and that gave me, that was a children's garden mm -hmm. and that gave me the opportunity to develop a garden for children where they could go and learn about their culture 
and also about plants. So, for example, one project that I did there was um, take the Spanish alphabet and see if they were, uh, the other day I saw some of the letters, they were this big. My brother, he made them of plywood, let's say the S. And then I had a, a friend that he's an artist and he was able to to draw this um, a plant that started with that letter, the, any particular letter, he would draw, let's say the S again. So he would draw something that had to do with our culture and then he, we worked together for a while because he had to be something about the culture and something about a particular plant that started mm -hmm. with the letter S. So then we put them in poles and then you will go in the garden, A, B, C, D, whatever. And then you will find, you will learn about the culture, but you will also learn about that particular plant that he was there. Mm. So it was a challenge to to get a, these plants, mostly all of them grew in Puerto Rico or they were related to Puerto Rico somehow. Like Puerto Rican oregano or? It could be Puerto Rican mm -hmm. oregano mm -hmm. or, or it could be um, sunflowers but we couldn't put the sunflowers during, uh, under the S. Mm. Have to be under the G, girasol. Girasol. And so on and so on. So it was fun. But then when, when you will go to the garden with the little ones, you know, like, not only, and they were also learning the letters in Espanol. S, B, W, and so on. So it was many lessons, depending on the interest of the teacher at that day, depending on the size, the age of the children. It was, but you could have this alphabet going everywhere. And it was painted in pastel colors. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to compete with the brightness of the flowers or the background or anything. It was just, but it was just, it was a lot of fun. And they were not, the same height. There were some of them higher, some of them lower, so it would be just like all wow. over the garden. I was a project. If there's a photo of them or if any of them are still existing, that would be a very good thing to like get archived, but that's mm. really cool. But, yeah. um, I am moving and I don't know, it has taken me a long time, but I have, I don't know how many pictures Hmm. that I've, I'm finding them and I'm not looking at them because my kids, that they're helping me, say, mother, it would take me forever. I just put them and put them in boxes and then it will be, and then it will be time, it's time wow. to identify them. But I, I asked Nori Square if they want them and I'm also, I started doing that. Mm -hmm. If I find pictures of children when they were young, I'm, those I'm putting them separate. Mm -hmm. Because I know that they, these, they will be interested in having those. Yeah. But it's a task um, that I'm doing. Wow. That, um, I want, I almost wanted to, I almost want to skip ahead and ask about that. But there are a lot of questions I still have left. So I wanted to just, I wanted to, I guess, move from there because we've talked about you know your Philadelphia green involvement um, well if you want it um, uh, and if you have do you have any stories you want to share from that apart from going to Puerto Rico or anything specific when you went to Puerto Rico or anything um, oh that that uh, because uh, I went with uh, the, some board members mm -hmm. and uh, it was very interesting because some of them uh, were white and some of them were African Americans and what we did every group that I took we it was not just going to Puerto Rico you have a mosquito or something on your forehead thank you <laughs> um we will get together twice before 
so they will tell me a a wish. They will tell they will tell me three wishes that they will like to see or do in Puerto Rico, and I promise them that I will grant one. That helped me mm-hmm. create a program, and always every year, and I did that for ten years. Sometimes I used to take groups twice a year, and. That, that gave me the opportunity to create these incredible programs. And um, the board members that went with me, I've still, I call a, some of them, we're still in touch. We are still in touch. Wow. And the question is, when are we going back to Puerto Rico? Well, now we have a COVID, but it's, uh, like for example, and I learned from them. Um, this couple, her name is. Um, she's still connected a lot with a uh, PHS. Um, Sylvia Bay. Yes, she's. I'm, oh. I'm going to. She's going to a workshop with me tonight. Um, you do workshops? Yeah, I do. I do workshops on how to do this kind of interviewing. Um, so. Yeah. So you're going to see Sylvia Bay tonight? Just over Zoom, but yes. So then you ask her <laughs> if she knows Irish Brown. Okay. Just ask that question. Yes. She was supposed to come and see the garden two weeks ago, but she had a funeral. Oh. And then I was feeling, I have been feeling like I believe it's, it's uh, allergies. So I said I'm not feeling well, and then it rained, and we haven't. But I learned from her. But Sylvia Bay, her ex-husband, they he said to me that they said to me that they were Moors. They belonged to something, oh. and he was the one that told me when we were in San Juan, the architecture, he said, come here, Iris, let me, let me, let me. He said, do you see the architecture, all these arches and all this? That is Moors, from the Moors. I said, who are they? You don't know? I said, no, tell me, who are they? And then he told me that they were rulers of a huge part of Spain for 800 years. Mm-hmm. You kidding me? No. Mm-hmm. So that's Sylvia Bay. Wow. So what happened, the garden, uh, the, the, these trips to Puerto Rico, uh, they, they brought us closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they, they understood more why it was important for me to put ridiculous colors all over and to have these celebrations and to do these things because it was just like they they all know that Norris Square was none mm-hmm. by what we did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. It was just like <laughs> So it brought it brought you all together. Um and, yeah. it, and it helped show them what you were doing. Yes, and, and so the they, reason. Right. So they so, so then they understood, and it was much mm-hmm. easier to celebrate together because mm-hmm. he was not knowing this is who we are mm-hmm. and this is what is important to us. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have, instead, we don't have a theater in the community, we don't have places for us or the children to go and learn or share. No, everything was done in the gardens, mm-hmm. and it still is. If we don't do it here, it's not going to be done. This was your school, your your theater. We your... have we have to we have to we have to create these opportunities. Mm-hmm. And uh, so and and for me now it's like normal. Mm-hmm. And I tell people I don't know how to do a garden if we don't have all these uh, other compon- mm-hmm. component components. No, I, I just, I refuse to do a garden just planting vegetables and just that. One thing that you will not do in a garden is not just plant vegetables. That's right. <laughs> Going back to the question, yes. yes. Wow, that's good to know. Um, I guess, oh man, we are running low on time. Um, uh, 
I almost feel like I have to. I want to interview you again because we're not. I like we're not even to the present day at this point. Oh. Um, well, you could do that. You just yeah. let me know when you have time, and, and yeah. we could do that. Yeah, I think what would be good next time is if we could get an interview. Um, I don't want to. Um, I think that actually that's a really good note to end it on. What you know, the people took away from you know your work and kind of bringing it back to what the gardens have done and continue what La, Las Parcelas has done and continues to do in putting you know and bringing culture and you know making a place of culture for you and your community right um so i think that that's a good place to stop here okay um so but next time if we could get an interview maybe in el colobo okay uh, and you can maybe do a, a a little tour there as well um because that would also be interesting i was going to ask you next about el colobo and the documentary so I'm going to leave it off here. So thank you very much, Iris. Um, I'm going to turn off the recorder now. Um, and so, hi, um, this is Joe Maycook. Today is October 22nd, 2021. And I'm back uh, with Iris Brown, North Square Neighborhood Project. This is, uh, I should say, um, this interview is on be again, on behalf of PHS. Pennsylvania Horticultural Society and the North Square Neighborhood Project. Um, and so today, for the second part of the interview, uh, Iris and I are talking in um, El Colobo, um, right? Um, which, yeah, um, right across the street from Las Parcelas um, on Palethorpe Street. Um, yeah, so Iris, I think you were just talking about um, this piece of a palm, the, um, this piece of a palm tree where coconuts would hang and how you would use it around your home for various things like sweeping the floor, um, for kin yeah, kindling with kindling. the top branches, yeah. And then these are the parts, this is for beauty. We must have beauty in everything that we do, so I'm going to show you how do we use this. See the horns yes. on the mask? This is this part. Oh, so the horns on the mask inside yes. the inside um, this building in El Colobo are all from palm trees. Yes. Wow. That's really and cool. you see these um, uh, are those coconuts? Those are coconuts and again we use the coconuts to make oil so um, to cook with it for the skin, for the hair, and then we use everything from the coconut again for cooking for kindle, is that how you say it? Kindling. 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 Uh, we use the whole thing, the coconut, to start the fire, and then for beauty, here you go, number one, two, three. Those are the stages mm -hmm. for a coconut to become a mask. And that is for a 10 day festivity in my hometown of Loisa. It's the only town where we celebrate with coconut mask. Mm -hmm. We have uh, another town, Ponce, mm -hmm. but they make this type of mask, but they are made from paper mache. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so this was um, a practice from brought over from Africa. Yes. Um, oh. Yes, the mask. And what it is, it's a, f it's a festival that it has four characters, and one of them represents Spain. Mm -hmm. So the, fest the festival started just uh, Spain celebrating, but then the Africans that were in Loisa, they said, we are going to celebrate. And they made their own costumes, and they made their own mask, and they were celebrating. And the third character, is a person that lost his uh, mentality. I'm gonna say mental. His he was a, he had a difficulty mm -hmm. 
thinking I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. And then he would dress with whatever he could find around the house. And then it was another person that he was like a male, but he was pretending to be a female. And then they would wear whatever. And those people, they would be out there singing. And he said, all of these people in back of them um, just singing. And it was just the whole town participated in this festival. And back in Norway Square here in Colobo, since this is part of Africa, and this is a, an African a garden with um, with the spirit of Africa, then this is what we teach and this is what we celebrate. And on the 30th, we are going to have a big celebration. Today at 2 o'clock, they're going to be practicing. So they're going to be singing some of the songs oh, wow. that the people sing after these characters. The costume is something like this. Mm-hmm. And they make it huge, so that's why they call it the gigante, because he, he, the person becomes a giant. Gigante. 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 Yeah. 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 And so that that's like kind of a sheet, and like an orange sheet or a. That is a. Canvas. You know, they don't look like that. I just caught it. You see, it's just <laughs> for representing. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, the colors. Um, they have to be dark colors or bright colors mixed with uh, dark. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that represents Spain, the color are very soft and shiny, like taffeta is the material, and the mask is made of uh, uh, a screen. Mm-hmm. Beautiful made. Uh, they don't look like... They don't know, look like the... Uh, grotesque, like this, no. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. African ones. Well, the more directly African-based ones. But um, wow, thank you for showing me that. Um, you see the coconut. Yeah. So the inside the mask, you can see the coconut fibers. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. That's very like it's very resourceful to use the just the coconut tree for not just food but for everything else. For everything else, it's like the the American people said if you. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, but I don't think most. I don't think you know most people use lemons quite as resourcefully. You know, not the. Oh no, <laughs> they are not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you but. see all these objects on the table. I need to clean them today, because mm-hmm. tomorrow we are going to have. They are having workshops here. Augmentation. Um, reality, augmented reality, something like that. Yeah. So, and then tomorrow we are going to be looking at these objects and then people are going to be telling their story. So I, (laughs) yeah. So actually that was something I wanted to ask you about a bit later. Um, but I think that we can talk about it right now since you're talking about it and we're here with the objects that they're going to you to Mm -hmm. be handling, right? So. Could you talk a bit more at your current about your current work with that project? With um, I think it's called Places of Power. Yes. Um, with uh, Mike Kudemeyer and Anula Shetty. Let me yes. know if I'm mispronouncing anything. Um, are you asking me to pronounce <laughs> them correctly? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, no, you did you did good. <laughs> okay. Good. Yes. Um, Anula and Mike, we meet them. I think it was two or three, two or four, and. Um, we were able to to do this documentary together, and it's um. So this is the 2006 Via Africana Colobo, um, about and Las Parcelas, um, and so. Las Parcelas and here. Yeah. Because all this, it mostly, mostly everything is here, and I don't even know that this one. Because we did one like 15 minutes, but this one, the one, this part is is more than 15 minutes Mm -hmm. so they are going to present this on saturday the 30th also but these people they are professors at temple university Mm -hmm. and they are very good friends of nori square the gardens and they are back and now they are doing this program with people of the community they are helping them learn how to do this augment 
augmented reality that's the way you say it? augmented reality yeah okay and um, people are having so much fun and my participation i know that i'm not going to learn anything that have electronics mm -hmm. mm, that's not me but my participation in the program is to get the people from the community and also the cultural aspect of the program because how are they going to tell the stories if they don't have um uh, that a uh, beginning you know like um us we don't like or we we are not used to i will say uh to talk about puerto rico or talk about us or anything like that we keep that quiet so this program is very important because it gives uh, the people the opportunity to say how they feel and it, this, it, it, is, it is an incredible and powerful um, conversations that we are having here listening to their stories where they came from how do they do that and be able to have these expensive um, cameras and learning how to use the cameras first and then walking around filming uh, everybody else and sound system and just it's just incredible just to see them and for me it gives me um, a lot of hope that programs like that is what we need because if these people common people normal people from the community we are learning or they are learning I should say that how to do this and have so much fun and open up then they could learn other things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that this is the beauty. That this was the beauty of all of the gardens of Novi Square that set them apart. Because now we are here in Colobo and we do the gardening, we plant, we save seeds, we do all the things that you normally do in a garden. But then we do all these other things that normally don't happen in a garden, mm -hmm. but they happen in our gardens because that is the purpose. We don't have anything else in the community. We don't have a theater. We don't have any place where the children could go and learn. So we use the gardens, every single space for that, for beauty, for singing, for cooking, for dancing, for storytelling, uh, to listen to the people when they are having difficulties listen to the people when a new a baby is born in the family and who's going to puerto rico where they're going it's just i call them i call the gardens our newspaper because that's what it is mm -hmm. it's an open space where we could do all those things that we are used to do in puerto rico mm -hmm. so we brought we brought that from puerto rico here to North Philly. Yeah. So I wanted to, I guess, get back a little bit because El Colobo specifically has a slightly different story than Las Barcelas, right? This garden specifically focuses a lot on Puerto Rican African. Yes. Um, if you want it, could, so could you talk a little bit more about the development of it and maybe about the garden and maybe we can, you know, walk around and see what else you'd like to sh um, show me. Yeah. The this garden is the last garden of Norway Square. Mm -hmm. But I had, when I was working in Las Parcelas, I had a space where the chickens are now. And I, my brother, he cut out the shape of a hut from a uh, play wood. And I used to decorate that area and put clothes and I put some um, uh, uh, display of masks and things like that. And I used to call it, Villa Africana, Colobo. So before you had this physical lot as it is set up now, as it was set up in 2006 when you finished, um, you had a little space in Las Parcelas that fulfilled some of the same functions. It was the up. same fun function, but it, of yeah. course I will have, to, I had to take everything down after the visitors came and all that because it was not a structure there, but it had a name, Villa Africana, Colobo. By after the visitors came, you mean, um, was this when people from 
well, yeah. Could you tell me when that was and which visitors those were? I think I might have an idea, but I don't want to. We, um, um, I don't want to brag, is what you say, but this is the truth. Mm -hmm. Norris Square, Green Country Town, was the Green Country Town of PHS. Right, 1993. Yeah. yeah. That's not a secret. Yes, that is. No, there is. I was going to ask <laughs> you. I was going to ask you too about because there's a book specifically about you as a green country town. I was wondering if you had anything to do with putting that together. Your picture appears several times in it, but they have a book. Yes. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, they are keeping secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, no, no, I don't know anything about it, but it's just, um, and I'll tell you why we feel that way. Um, and you're going to have, you're going to, you, you are going to interview Eileen Gallagher. Yes. And she's going to tell you, um, she's going to tell you everything that I'm she's going to tell you because we were together <laughs> and we became friends and it's just, she's going to tell you. Okay. Um, and then you ask her if Iris saying the truth or is she exaggerating? Ask her that, please. Because what happened was since we were suffering so much because of the drugs and we didn't have anything in the community and we were blamed for that situation, then when we had the opportunity to do something that this was the first organization, PHS was the first or organization that looked at us and I'm I'm hoping that they believed or something that they, we could do it. Then that was something serious. We needed to perform. We needed to show that we are capable of doing this and more. And that's why we took this uh, green country town very seriously. And we did what. And we did, we did more. Tomasita Romero and I, we, we were here seven days. And we will come very early in the morning and it was 10, 30, night time. And we were here. And people will bring, bring us fruits or water, food. Mira, when are you going home? You don't, you are not able to see. We were able to see because you know the eyes, they get used to the darkness. Yeah. And why we were here? Because we couldn't do everything that we needed to do. Um, and I, I, I couldn't see a weed anywhere in any of the gardens because it was six gardens that we were taking care of. And each one of them had a different theme. And each one of them, it has to be Flawless. Yes, that is the word. And because of that, we were working and working and working. Um, I was young, I, I could do it. And it was just for me, it was something inside me that it was just like, it is brown, you need to move. So this was an advance when you were preparing for um, them to declare you a green country town. Um, yeah, we were working for three years. Wow, yeah. Um, okay, so back, but I think that this goes, but I think that we got into this question because we were talking a bit about that, um, that hut, um, that you, you had made where the chickens are now. Yeah. Um, and so you took that down when the visitors came. What happened next, um, for El Colobo? We had to wait. We did that for five years at least. And then one year, Sister Carol Keck, she was a director, and she called me to the office and she said that a, it was a group of students, I don't remember from where, but they were a state far away from here, and that they want to come to Norris Square and to do anything that we wanted them to do. And she asked me, because I have always, I have notebooks and I'm writing all these dreams and ideas and trying to draw but I don't know how to draw but I tried to do drawings 
Um, and she asked me, and I said, I open up the notebook, and I said, Be African color bomb, we need to make the hot. The hot, yes, the hot. So then we had this uh, person, Jim Shield, his disease also, and he was an architect. So when I talked to Jim and he was there for me, um, the smallest dream that I had, he will make it impossible to, 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 to do it, to help me, to work with that. So I said, Jim, can you help? We need to build this hut. She said, tell me, what do you need? What do you need? What do you want? Where do you want them? How, how do you want them to look? And then I had a, a photo of some huts uh, somewhere in West Africa. And I showed, showed it to him. So we got ready and then the group came. They were young people and they will come with two uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. And they will be here for one week and then they will go home and then they send another group and they were here for three weeks and we ended up with the huts. So that was five weeks in 2006? Or? It was three weeks. They oh. were here for three weeks. I meant five weeks in total of students being involved or no? Um, three. Oh, okay. They will come one week, go home, another group, and then they did that three times. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Um, and so that was... So El Colobo, as it was, as it is, I believe, came to be in two thousand six. It so, could be. Okay. It <laughs> At could least be. the documentary came to be in two thousand six, and I think that's what's on the Norris Square website. Um, but so, um, okay, um, and so the huts came to be. How was the garden developed on this lot? The garden. Yeah, you can you we can also walk around and you can talk about that as well. If yeah. You like. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to leave you standing in an uncomfortable position. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get the key so you. Okay. I like the weather. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> it's very. It's not too. It's not sweaty weather. No, no, no. no. So these, these are the huts. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I have not been in Africa. Mm -hmm. But it's just. Uh, but these are like st um, structures that you had in Luisa? No. Okay. No, they are. A I have seen some uh, photos of places in Africa mm -hmm. where they have this shape of homes and then uh, you could go in. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. They've been yellow on the on the ceiling, and then there's a red, a blue pattern on the inside, um, and yeah. And then this little mattress. Um, I'm not. Tell me if I'm getting anything wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I used to put a mat on the floor, mm -hmm. and then I feel like a no. Let's build. That is a box made of plywood. Okay. Because for me it was, and uh, the pictures that I have seen, they sleep on the floor, but I didn't want to people to to keep on thinking that that's all it is in Africa. And since if it is a representation, then I could. Uh, uh, that's what I have been doing. I. I use my imagination on how it will look mm -hmm. um but i honestly don't know i haven't been in one mm -hmm. um it's just to tell a story it's just for people to to have an appreciation for africa and its people mm -hmm. 
one's beautiful. Thank uh, you. And you have a lot of, I don't know, masks as well, other artifacts. And if, again, like if it is a garden, I try, I don't want them to look the same. Mm -hmm. Sunflowers with girasol. Girasol. Nice. <laughs> um, and here, orange, and then a green pattern on the inside, and you have a lot of nice picture paintings in this one. Um, and you see the hole on top? Yes. When it rains, we don't get wet, or we don't, or not snow either. Really? And uh, I don't know how. We are glad that it does snow, but we don't know how. <laughs> and sometimes when you come at different times of the day, you see the light. I'm gonna close the door just so you can see how beautiful it looks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's just really. Yeah. It's good to be here, read, mm -hmm. uh, especially at this in this weather. It's, it feels good, and the smell is purposely done. That is patchouli. Hmm. I put patchouli oil and the patchouli. Um, I used to go to the river with my grandmother, and she used to collect the 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 roots, and then make tiny little bundles, and she would put that in her house. Mm -hmm. So this reminds me of her. But then some African people have been here, and they said that it smells like home. So it does. It does. Fulfilling its function. I, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cecily. Cecily told me when I visited here with you, um, Cecily and Teresa before, um, that they that these spaces elicit. Uh, you know, they produce stories. Um, and I think that that's. I think that that example of the patchouli, you know, reminding them of home, you know, is evidence of that. So this one has a lovely light, co light colored ceiling and then a blue pattern on the inside. And then is this a hammock? It's, it's supposed to be. Oh, well that's cool. Have you, have you used it? No, no, okay. it's not as strong enough. Oh, okay. But you have, uh, you, you mentioned that you did read inside um, that, that hut over there. Yeah, and this one is this, this woman that I met, she was, uh, lost in many 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 years ago and I asked her can I help you and she said yes we were supposed to have a meeting here at the seniors but they couldn't do it and it was he he was studying at temple and they were gonna they wanted to hear something with the seniors I said well I am a gardener here in Norris Square um, if you want to I could take you to the gardens and perhaps, maybe, you could find something of what you are looking for. They came and it was just, when she saw the little house at Las Parcelas, she was, and then when I brought them here, she just came in and she started saying a poem. She was very dark skin, very dark skin. And my grandmother, she was very dark skin, but for some reason, I didn't recognize her as a Puerto Rican. I don't know why. Because I grew up in a town where 95% of the people we are, we have very dark skin. But her, I thought she was African American or Haiti or someplace else. Mm -hmm. When she came in and uh, when she saw the little house there first and she said, I must bring my mother because she, I said, where are you from? She said, I was born here, but my mother, she's from Puerto Rico. I said, okay. When she came in, she started saying this poem that she wrote about her hair. And the man that was with her, her friend, he didn't know that she wrote the poem, but that was so powerful. She, the poem was about every single strand of hair. She had a story for each, one of them and what happened is that she worked in the post office post office and they were going to a party 
and the other African American said, well, I'm gonna, I have to go, I'm gonna do my hair and my nails and everything else. And she said, I went dressed, but her hair was just natural. And when her friends saw her, what's up with your hair? And she asked them back, what is up with my hair? And that started the whole poem because it was just powerful. But so many, many, many years ago, I wish I knew where she's at. So she could come now that we are ready again for programs and she could tell us that program again. That was powerful. Each one, each one, it was like she's taking each one and she had a story. I have never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, and when, when it is hot and you know, you don't, but days like this, I think, you know, we just need to start making tea and invite people. And I just said to, to Teresa that I, I have an idea of, of having a program and I called the program A Day at Colobo. Un dia en color. Mm -hmm. Tea with lemon, of course. Huh? Tea with lemon. Rather, uh, I could say that you said tea, making tea. Tea, making tea. Um, no, hot tea with the herbs that we are growing. Oh. And uh, have a Puerto Rican breakfast, and then we will cook together, and then tell stories or do a different. Um, uh, things like we make, I like to make this little mask that they are made out of walnuts. Walnut mask made out of walnuts? Yes. Wow. Yes. I'll have to see that. Oh, you must see them. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let me see. To be honest, we made some uh, when we, uh, I had that privilege of helping with the flower show. I think it was... In 2003? Oh, you know more than me. We could make it, you know, we make a good couple because I don't remember dates. But you remember, you are, you are doing your research. It's my job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> the flower show? Yeah. Um, I just, PHS doesn't know what that organization means to me. But it was a time I was introduced to PHS when PHS was like powerful, you say PHS, and it was just incredible. We didn't know about PHS because PHS was not in the poor communities. Green country town, Philadelphia Green was the one that came to the communities, the poor communities. And then it was like when we learned about the flower show. I didn't know what was the flower show. I didn't know that we had a flower show. I didn't know anything about that uh, organization. But then PHS grew on me the, that a point that it was just, it was like a second home. And the people that worked there, Sally and Eva, Roy, and Maitri, and uh, it's so many, I don't remember Eileen, so many people that they were friends. I could go there and let's say that I went to Center City. I'll say, okay, I'm just gonna go there and say hello. And it was just go to their desk and say hello to everybody like if I was home. And that's the same way that we treated them when they came here. So it was just this relationship and one day it was a phone call and it was from Mr. Her last name is Edelman. I didn't know who he was and he was a producer of the flower show, I believe. Right? I'm, right I am too? guessing. I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not as aware of the staff names at that time, but that sounds, I mean, I get, but it sounds right. To me. I, think he, I think he was the director of producer. It was one of those titles. Mm -hmm. And it was his phone call. He said, hi, Iris Brown, my name is, um, I, I, I remember his last name, first name, but his last name was Edelman. Mm -hmm. How are you? I said, I'm fine. Uh, the reason why I'm calling you is because we don't have a theme for the flower show and we are late. And some of the stuff, they asked me to talk to you. 
And I stay just quiet because like, what am I supposed to do with the flower show? And so I was just like, okay. Um, he said, I would like to talk to you about it. And I said, will you please come? I, if that is something that I like to do. Or oh, you want to talk to me about something? I'm not going to Senate City. You come here. And I said, oh, yes, we could talk. Um, I could give you the address of Norris Square. And then he said, um, well, I'm going to go away for a week. But when I come back, I promise you that I will call you. And then I said, okay, that, that sounds fair. And I asked him, I said to him, may I ask you a question? He said, sure. What are you looking for, for this flower show? He said, I really don't know. I said, well, I am from Puerto Rico and I am from a very small town. We do not have a flower show. We do not have a lot of plants or vegetables, but we do have a festival for 10 days and it's incredible and all Puerto Rico knows about this. We do have a flower show in another town in the mountains that is called El Festival de las Flores. He said, oh, Festival de las Flores. Okay. So he called me back and he said to me, it was just, I asked, we met in Norris Square and then he said, will you please tell me more about your town, the festival, and I did that. So he went back, he called me the next day. He said, Iris, yes, I have a name for the show. So what is the name? El Festival de las Flores. I almost died. <laughs> oh, I feel, you know, it's just, that was, that was incredible. That that was that was just incredible because it's like how you know how so I said oh my goodness El Festival de las Flores and from that on uh, he gave me a name consultants I didn't know what was that <laughs> that, that you are listed as that um, right records. right yeah. And I was just <laughs> okay. I I mean, if I tell you that you are a very good storyteller, then you must believe that you are not saying to me that you are one. I'm saying to you that you are a good storyteller. Then, you say, oh, well, she says that. Then I guess I am. So I say, okay, I have to look it up. <laughs> so then he was such, or oh, he is such a incredible human being and then he will turn red because I will say oh we must do this and this and that and the other he say Iris I said no 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 you want to use my town there at the flower show we need to represent <laughs> and it was just like then I met the um, the first, the two people, uh, I forgot her name. I spoke to her like two years ago. Um, they were a team and they were uh, putting the center uh, together. I met them and they were incredible. And then I said to, to Edelman, they need to go to Puerto Rico because I saw a sketch that they did of the center of the flower show. The convention center. Yeah, at the yes. convention center. Yes. I said, they need to go to Puerto Rico. He said, but, you know, we have a budget, but they need to go to Puerto Rico because the sketch, this, this, this is not Puerto Rico. This is not my hometown. So then since we became friends, I said, you need to go to Puerto Rico. Keep working on him so that he could send you to Puerto Rico. And um, I said, you could stay in my house. But then I don't know what happened. Uh, they sent him, they sent them to a very expensive hotel in in uh, Isla Verde. So I said, you know what? I am flying there. I'm going to meet you there, and I'm go. I am going to pick you up at the hotel, and you're going to stay in my house. 
and that's exactly what happened. And one morning when I got up, she was up already and she was just taking pictures of my living room. And if you go to my house in Puerto Rico, not now because something happened that is not like that anymore. But at that time I designed that uh, house and I, I'm not architect. I, I am, I didn't finish college or anything like that, but it's something that I know what I want. Mm -hmm. I took a, a branch of a mango tree and I designed a house with, a, with that branch in my hand. Wow. I just make the line and make the square or whatever it was and then I will look at the bed I will look at the closet I will look at this and this and that and if it was too small I will erase it with my foot and I will add a couple of inches because I wanted to have a square house and it is square just for three inches yeah. so the house was built specifically for me to bring people to Puerto Rico so I could show them my island and we could learn together and then it will be um, when we had the, the workshops or festivities or cooking or whatever in the gardens then they understood so that house is built um, when would you say like 1990 yeah wow. yeah so in addition to work in addition to cleaning up you know the vacant lots here um, <laughs> And yeah, fighting the drug problem and gardening and cooking and playing music and all these community services that you were providing, education. You were also simultaneously putting together a house in Puerto Rico yes. that helped to also help with that effort. Wow. Yeah. And I was raising four children and three of my nephews and uh, with my mother and my brothers that they were, uh, I am the oldest of 10 and nine of them, they were involved in drug trafficking and drug using. So it was, but I was young. Mm -hmm. you and I young. was young and I had yeah. all this energy. And you had all this energy and you had the help of Tomasita, you know, when I was there, yeah. the gardens, yeah. and the help of your family in Puerto Rico. Yeah, well. I, of course, I didn't do this by myself, that would be a, that would be a superwoman, <laughs> something like the more than a superwoman. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be for a cartoon or a movie or something. Yeah. No, no. But it was. Um, I think my part, most of my of the part, on this is like. A, it was. The way that I think, you know, I always see, ideas or colors or projects. And then I had all these people that they believe in 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 my dreams, mm -hmm. and they helped me to make that dream come true. So we're turning to I guess um, working with people uh, again, where we left off with the flower show discussion of two thousand three. <laughs> 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 that that was a it was a it was a very good tangent. Um, I really I really think that. This is, I'm very excited to publish this interview, um, but <laughs> I think uh, you've been, uh, I've learned a lot talking to you, but I wanted to, I guess, yeah, get, get us back to where we were. It's Puerto Rico, um, the people who are designing the conven conventions that are in your house that you've set up for people coming to Puerto Rico to, you know. They, she was, that day she wake up early and she was just going around in my living room and she was taking pictures. And then when she told me, she said, oh, Iris, I, I'm, I hope that you don't mind. I said, no, I wanted you to come here and you get your inspiration from whatever you could get it from. So uh, when we were there, it was specifically when we were having the 10 day celebration and I took her to different artists, and I took her to the church, that, which is the second oldest in Puerto Rico, and is the first one in use, because the other one is beautiful in Porta, it's, it's called Porta Shelley, 
in San Germán, but it's not in use. It's a museum now. Y your your church is the second. Yeah, but I mean, well, I was just asking its name. Hmm? I was asking the name of the church you took. It oh, to. it's called San Patricio. And uh, why I took her there? Because um, the festival is called Santiago Apostol, and Santiago Apostol is one of the saints, and it's a story behind it. And I told her the story, and I wanted her to see uh, as much as she could and to learn about this festivity that is uh, very uh, junta untwine entwined with with the celebration so she saw the church and um, it was just incredible because when she came back she had mountains in her second design i think i have both somewhere she had mountains in puerto rico that she didn't believe that we had mountains for some reason she had um she used the altar of the church as part of the center stage for the flower show. She had, she was able to capture uh, so many details of my hometown for the center of the flower show. It was incredible. Something that I, I kept on saying to Mr. Edelman, we need music. I said, no, Iris, remember, he, then he changed my name. You know what was my nickname? What? Diablita. <laughs> Little devil? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said, no, Diablita. And then he will turn red. And I was thinking, who is the devil here? <laughs> because, you know, the devil is supposed to be red, right? So he was turned red, and I was like, he's calling me Diablita? Look at his face. <laughs> but he said, Diablita. No, remember this is a flower show. I said, Mr. Edelman, remember this is a flower show about my hometown. And in my hometown, we don't do anything without music. We must have music, Mr. Edelman. And then he said, Oh no, but that is not in the budget. And I said, Okay, you don't say, uh, you don't say no to a diablita. So what I did, I started, and I and I met this man that he was nominated for a Grammy Award that year, that year. His name is William Cepeda. And where is William Cepeda? He's from my hometown. He grew up next to my aunt's house. And he used to play, it's not the saxophone, it's not the, it's this instrument. Clarinet or oboe? No. Or Which oboe? one? Oboe, clarinet, um, It sounds, trumpet. it sounds like strong. It, it, like this, you have to. Is it a trumpet or a French horn? Um, you have to, you know, it's the one that they have to. Yeah, I think that might be a trumpet. Um, it's something, like one of okay, those. One of those wind instruments. Yeah, and my aunt used to be so mad at him. Why don't you go? Why don't you go? Uh, you are making all that noise. Why don't you go to your mother's house and do that? No, you have to be here next to me. And then when he became famous, I asked my aunt. And what do you do with your tongue now? <laughs> because she, he became famous. And then um, I called him in New York and I said, William, what are you doing these days? He said, why? Why it is brown? Um, well, I don't know, but I'm working on something. So one day we had a meeting with Mr. Edelman. And there were about 20 people there. And what I did, I spoke to this group that he was growing up as musicians and playing uh, music from my hometown. And we had um, this woman, Edelman, her name was Edelman also, Sarah. And she was an AmeriCorps. And I said, Sarah, I need your help on this. And I put all that together. And Mr. Edelman, he didn't know anything. And when we were having the meeting allá in PHS, she, I was just looking at, at Sarah, and when she did like this to me, I just got up from my chair. Excuse me, uh, uh, can you move your chair like this? Excuse me, would you please move your chair like that? And Mr. Edelman was looking at me and getting more red. And I made a circle, big circle in that room. 
And then I asked, I said to Sarah like this, and when they came, there were about 15 drummers and dancers and with their, with their clothes and everything. And they came to the middle of that and they were just playing and dancing and playing and dancing. And I looked at Mr. Edelman and he said, Diabla. <laughs> he said, Diabla. <laughs> Okay, you you upgraded from little devil yes, to devil. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, I, I didn't know if I was going to be the consultant anymore or if it was something that he was happy with. <laughs> and he, after everybody left, then I met with him. What happened, Mr. Edelman? He said, I, I, just, can't be, I just can't believe. What else are you going to do? I said, what? <laughs> so you brought the music into the to PHS him. meeting to him. room. Wow. To him, because I tried to explain to him that it was a necessity to have the music, and he didn't get it. I said, okay, then I need to do something else. And I brought the music to him. Of course, he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was me. I said, you know what? I'm not asking PHS to pay them. But what I'm asking you to do for them is that they will get at least four parking spaces underneath the convention center for free. And I need two rooms, one for men and one for women, so they could change. And I need some tokens, or I need something for the people. I need this. So he said, yes. <laughs> and then I said, we need some custom. He said, um, there is no money for custom. He said it would be too expensive to get. Who is saying that you need to get people from out there? We are going to make the custom. You just, PHS just need to buy the material. And we have pictures, us sewing, the whole, the women with Grupo Motivos sewing and having fun and doing all this. It was just. I will never forget all the work and all the excitement. And Norris Square uh, area community was like, even people from Puerto Rico that they know that Loiza is one of the smallest town and is one of the poorest town. And it's, um, um, because we are black, it's like, like we don't have anything to offer. They couldn't believe that we were in the center of the flower show, <laughs> it's, 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 it was just out of this world. Then I started calling Puerto Rico and I called the mayor. From Luisa. Yes, you need to be here, you need to be here. And it was just a lot of difficulties and do you believe that the father of my two oldest children, he was 40 something years old and he had a stroke and he died during the flower show during the flower show and I was from Tomasita you are in charge and Jim Shields the one that helped build this you are in charge but something that I do is I don't know if you have noticed I talk a lot and when I'm working with a group they know as much as I know if whatever I go to a meeting I'm taking notes and when I come back I say come on let's go let's sit down and let's talk about this and Whatever I know, I don't keep secrets from the people that, are, that we are working together. And it, I think it's good because Tomasita and Jim, they took over. I went to Puerto Rico with my children. I came back during the brunch and they presented them. They went up there, they presented them and this and that. Then after the brunch, we took them around, gave them a tour of the city and and all this on that. By you came back after the brunch, you mean here or Puerto Rico? No, they had a brunch for Or Square? No, they had a brunch in In the convention center. Uh, in the convention center. Mm -hmm. And so then you gave them a tour of the city. Of the city. That was the only but before I went to Puerto Rico I was able to, we were able to, my mother and I, we were able to cook for them. And, you know, I was with them like one or two days and then I have to go to Puerto Rico. 
and then it was me there in Puerto Rico, but my mind was here and all that, all that. But it was just, it was just beautiful. Oh, the area where they were going to be dancing. Oh, but we had to build a stage. No, you don't have to build a stage. This dance of bomba is something that is danced right there on the street. It's wherever you are. But what you need to do, and of course, at uh, that time, the, the, the people that they were doing the, the center, we were friends already, so whatever. <laughs> do you remember that I showed you this? Do you remember that I showed you this? That's what I mean. They have to bring truckloads of sand because they had to recreate an area with uh, sand, like if it, it was a shore. They brought a lot of things from uh, Florida and also from Puerto Rico. And then I had artisans in Puerto Rico creating these pieces. Like for example, one of the pieces was to create this that is made from a part of a car and that they create this that is to peel the coconuts. Yeah, and it was an artisan from Puerto Rico doing that, so it could be on display. All of the signs were in Espanol, and then we had newspapers from Puerto Rico. It was just like if you were in my hometown. Be it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And then on top, I was going through a depression. It was my first time and my only time that I had been depressed. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted, I wanted to be home sleeping because I was taking medicines. So I was doing all that, but it was just like, I need to go there, I need to go there. And one day they called me, I wish. At what time are you going to be here? And I say, I'm going to be there at this time. Okay. Somebody else called me. And I was like, what's going on? And when I went to um, to the convention center before, when they were putting the show together, mm -hmm. they took me. But it was like about six, seven, eight people around me, in back of me. And I was like, what's going on? And they took me. It was the church, they did a replica of the church. They did a replica of the church. And I remember that it was just incredible and you had all these bamboos, like it was a wedding, it was supposed to be a wedding. And they had all these bamboos and there they had all these white orchids of both, it was just gorgeous. And a little bit on this side, you believe that she did a replica of my house? A replica of your house? Of my house in Puerto Rico. Yeah, a replica of San Patricio. Um. Church, the San Patricio Church. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, around, it was a replica of my house in Puerto Rico, where they stayed. That's why she was taking the pictures. And she had, because she asked me, um, I brought so many things that I had and I borrow from my mother because to to stage the buildings that they did. I didn't think anything. And she asked me, "Do you have a pitch? Do you have pictures of your family, like your mother, your grandmother?" I said, "Yes." So I brought them, thinking that they were gonna. I don't know what she was gonna do with them. It was because she was recreating the living room and the porch in my house, and it was just the arches, it was just, and I had this lamp in Puerto Rico. It was like, these people are too much. I have this lamp in Puerto Rico and because the house was empty, uh, unless we went there, I said to myself, I'm not gonna buy new furniture. So I used to sew all of the curtains and all of the cushions and I would take them from here already made so when we go there we will wash clean everything and then put all that but the lamp I said, I'm not gonna be buying a lampshade every time that I come so what I did is I did it with paint the lamp 
Do you believe that she had one lamp shade like that? It was just it was it was just be <laughs> That must have that must have been nice during your depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um when I think about it, I couldn't enjoy it even more because of what was happening to me at that time. Um, but deep, 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 I know that I enjoy every single moment, but it just, I, I was taking like these medicines and it was the first time that I, I, I had a depression and all of these things, but it was just beyond me. So, he was able to contract William Cepeda, the one from New York. He never heard him before, so I had a CD, and I gave Mr. Ederman the CD so he would listen to this man, and he said, okay, so I gave him the contract, and they talked, and he came for three days, and then he was lost. My family, we had to go and get him. Uh, yes, he was lost, and then uh, he played for three days, and and then um, in between the group from here was playing, and after that, I don't know if they do it now because I have not been in the last three uh, flower, flower shows. shows. I have not been there, but I believe like at least two or three after the show from Loisa, they had music. <laughs> they did have a dance at that last one. Yeah. So, yes, I believe it. So they uh, had music, and yeah. it was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Making waves. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, you know what this does? Um, it's really if you work hard and you put your mind into it and you put your heart into it, different things, good things could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was El Festival de las Flores. Si. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sponsored by, well, with the help of consulting from, so, ah, excuse me. Uh oh, we don't have insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but with help from uh, La Diabla. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay, and so now we're going to talk, I guess, a little bit more about Okolobo. And so this is another kitchen. This is the kitchen. Wow. Is this ginger? Yes. Lovely. Yeah. So this is our kitchen, and we do cook here. Mm -hmm. And if you look again, everything is recycled. Mm -hmm. Things that I find, things that my brother finds, things that other people find, and my job a wawa cup <laughs> yeah because i take water from there yeah but mm. that is not it's totally out of place <laughs> and uh this wire here mm -hmm. i found this wire it's another piece somewhere and teresa the director she is like oh this is not good i said don't don't they <laughs> uh, uh, put in the trash my treasures <laughs> so she said okay wire. yeah I said okay so then I asked my brother to put it here and my sister I don't know for some reason it's hard to find these hooks these S hooks yeah so here it is and I put things there and for me it's just beautiful uh, reminds me of the things that my grandmother had in her kitchen in her and, kitchen and you can and of, but and of course this is also a functional kitchen so you it have you know yeah a little cast iron pan some sauce some sauce pans some ladles it's beautiful but, yeah. so this is my area my brother is helping me see i have not used it it's not ready mm -hmm. uh, where because i need a space to plant um, i love to do cuttings and db division of plants Oh, so this is going to be a propagation station. Yeah, behind propagation. The, yeah, behind the behind the kitchen. And we're going to be able to to start a composting. composting again. And of course, I have to have pallets everywhere because I love to write quotes. 
And this is a, uh, how do you call it, composting? Yes, Probably? composting. Composting type bathroom. Oh, okay, a composting toilet. Yeah. Yes. So this is a palette decorated with, not quotes, but the names of the, the plants. The names of the plants. And mm -hmm. they are looking sad because I'm take, I started taking some of them yesterday to the greenhouse mm -hmm. to uh, preserve them. And then we will have, uh, hopefully, some of them for the spring. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm giving out like the oregano and things to people in the neighborhood. Um, but this is a very important part. Uh, we use a lot of herbs for cooking, but also for medicines. Mm -hmm. I remember you said that you use some of them for tea. Yeah. Right? Um, which ones? We make tea, well, we have the mint here. We have different kinds of mint. But for, um, we have in the area in front, we have lemongrass, limoncillo. Mm -hmm. And I took that one to the greenhouse yesterday. This oregano, a very tiny leaf from Puerto Rico. And uh, we make tea when you have like a sore throat or something like that. A sore throat or a cough. Yeah. Wow. But we grew up with teas. And uh, also, if you have a fever, we put a couple of herbs together and then they put warm water. On top of your head? Head down and you stay still. And after that, they wrap you and you start sweating and the fever goes away. So imagine us when we came here and we go to the hospitals and you, your child has a fever and they tell you to put ice. <laughs> <laughs> The opposite advice, yeah. the opposite method. So, you know, it was like, ¿Qué? Se pasma. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But this is a very, um, it's very important. So hopefully next year I'm going to have more. You know, they, I've planted that, some flowers there and it took over. So I'm not, I don't want to plant that one because... I need a space to plant uh, more herbs. Okay. Um, are there any that you, are new types of herbs or just more of the same that you planted? Pardon? New, new kinds of herbs or just more of the same that you have? No, that's the beauty that I want more different kinds. Uh, mm -hmm. And the ones that are, of course, that I don't, I don't know how to use them, then that's part of the beauty that we learn together how to use them. No, I want different kinds. Mm -hmm. I think the bananas, they look so good there. The banana trees? Yeah, the, yeah, I think they look so good. They do. Yeah, I, re I was really curious about that because I've never grown them. I mean, I, I also come from Massachusetts where it's probably too cold. But so do they overwinter? But, you know, they are not, they are just ornamental. Oh, OK. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they are ornamental. I know some people at the, I know there are some people at the Spring Gardens um, in, um, you know, in Spring Garden at like uh, 18th and Wallace. Um, I used to live 18th and Green. Oh. When we were allowed to live there. <laughs> when you were allowed? Yeah. What happened? Who, who could live there? How expensive that is. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. we used to live. We used to live 17, 14 Spring Garden, where Community College is now. That's where we lived when we came from Puerto Rico. Well, I, I lived in New York, but then my family, we were there, 1714 Spring Garden. Mm -hmm. And it was a fire that they were about uh, four different families from Africa living there. Mm -hmm. It was a white lady named Mrs. Carmichael. And we were some uh, Puerto Ricans living there. And it was a huge fire. And there were three of the African people died and they were studying medicine in Temple. And Mrs. Carmichael died, her dog died, and I moved, we moved from there. 
three months before the fire mm -hmm. to 1822 green and 18 no eight when it was 1822 i believe and 1824 or it was there, it was almost at the corner, but we were there. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, she had the first floor, and we used to go through Brandywine and then go to Spring Garden. Um, but we were there. You were there, but then the, it became too expensive. It became too here. expensive. And then we went to 18, the 28-something Poplar, which is walking distance. Um, we could walk uh, to the art museum and to many places and of course and then we came to these neighborhoods and we were able to purchase our little houses that's good yeah but yeah i'm glad that you were able to move out of renting and into houses yeah that was that was a good part because <laughs> now i have my house on second street uh and after so many years uh I think I could get good money for it. Wow, because you because you are moving. I I, I moved already um, oh. almost a year ago, but the thing is that my things are still in the house. Right, like the photographs and the documents of the car. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we are actually running low on time, um, so I did. So I do want to get some final questions out of you. Okay. Um, but the, this has been very informative so far. Um, I guess, so, um, talked a bit about, you know, developing Colobo, um, the documentary um, with, uh, a new, with a new Lachetti, Mike Kudemeyer. Um, could you talk a little bit more, I guess, about how your involvement um, with NSMP and, and, you know, working in this garden has changed over the years from 2006 to 2020? Well, it has changed because I retired. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know. I think it's 11, mm -hmm. 12 years ago. And now I am back in Colobo uh, since the pandemic. So this is my second summer here. And it was my job was to bring Colobo back, to wake Colobo. And I believe that we have accomplished that. I am happy in uh, how it looks, and I am um, very happy with the workshops that we are having. Mm -hmm. I am very happy because people that I met through my gardening years in Norris Square, now we are in touch again. and. Some of them have come at for tours tomorrow. One of them is coming with her adapted song, Son, and he's from Africa. Yeah, so it's gonna be the first time that I'm going to show the garden to her and her son. <laughs> Let's see what he thinks about the houses and the smell of Pacholi. And I am totally happy and excited because he's like, this garden is meant for that, for people to come and celebrate, and it's happening. So my participation with Nori Square is uh, that yesterday I was working in the greenhouse there, bringing plants, mm -hmm. and I don't know what else is going to happen, but... Uh, Right now, I am here in Colobo. You don't know what will happen, but you're optimistic and looking forward to it. Oh, of course. Um, one of my sons, he had a celebration there in Las Parcelas, and it was to raise uh, funds for a, what is the name, LULAC. It's an organization that work, they work with children, and they came and they were able to raise some money, and because of that, um, we have to get some people to to do some cleaning and you know presenta you know presenta what it means presenta is like um, and nobody invited you and you went there uh, that 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 was me 
So and then I said, well, no, no, we need to do something. We need to clean and we need to paint the benches. And it was just like old me <laughs> dreaming and saying, this is what it needs to be done. And uh, when the director saw the place, she said, I can't believe that it's like this in three days. So when Teresa yeah. saw the place, she said, I just cannot believe that in three days this place is looking like that. So, uh, so now we are having meetings every Monday at five o'clock and it's talking about how can we put Las Parcelas back in business. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got any, got anything that you want to share about that project? Oh, we have, um, yeah, it's very exciting mm -hmm. and they have new people and then me again, the presenta. It's like, okay, for example, they were going to tear down that structure there. And I was just like, why? Why? Who is saying that? Oh, he's one of the gardeners. How long that gardener has been here? For one year or two. And you are trusting the judgment of the gardener, gardener that he has been here for two years or, or, or so to decide? Is that a structure that it has been there for 25 years needs to come down? So I said, can I go to the meetings? I said, of course you could come. And then I, we met and I asked her, why do you think that that, sh that structure should come down? And she, says, she said, because we need a more a space for planting. So you need more beds, yes. Can I say something to you? She said, yeah. I said, you know what, I come here and most of the beds are empty. They are full of uh, weeds, and I don't see that they are using them properly. Why? I think we need to sit down and talk about all the possibilities because that structure is something is beautiful. It's the strongest one that we have in the garden, and so on and so on. Well, so far we had about four meetings, and nobody's talking anymore about the structure. So I think it's gonna stay. The blue and orange one. The blue. That's the thing. When when I was there, it didn't have those hideous colors. And then they had those colors, and then they have seats, and the design of the seats, uh, the the tables, and it has some seating seating. Some uh, benches. It's like I'm gonna. We could call them benches, I guess, but they are circles. Mm -hmm. It is from Puerto Schools. Rico, and it oh. is uh, where the seniors and other people they play dominoes. So the lady she didn't know the the history behind anything there. So when I told her the history, then it was a different story. So I said, you know what we need to do is change the colors. It has too much bright yellow, and it's just it's not appealing to your eyes, but. The structure doesn't be doesn't have to be like doesn't, doesn't have, have to, to disappear. Down. Yeah, of yeah. course not. Mm -hmm. So you know things like that. But we we have been able to understand many things and I know that for for next year there are gonna be some changes. Okay, I think. Well, thank you very much, Iris. Thank um, you. It, was, yeah. it has been fun. <laughs> it has it has been fun speaking with you. I've, it's been a real honor too, um, and I'm hoping that you know. Um, yeah, I'm ho I'm I'm hoping to you know that these that other people find these interviews just as important to hear as I do. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, but I so I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. Um,